They're calling it the mortgage bomb. Lenders are withdrawing products, mortgage rates are climbing, and the Bank of England has made a shocking move that seemingly shows they're committed to driving them even higher. Today, we've raised interest rates. So let's first dig into what's happening, then what the likely effect will be, and finally, what you should do if you're affected by this. So mortgages are all over the news because of the Bank of England's losing battle against inflation, with Rishi's top priority to halve it by the end of the year looking a little shaky. But at least the economy's growing. I mean, well, at least the debt's falling. Nah, forget it. Anyway, the main CPI measure of inflation didn't change in May. It stuck at 8.7%, which was not supposed to happen. Markets anticipated the Bank of England would need to raise interest rates higher than previously thought and keep them higher for longer to bring inflation back down. And indeed, the Bank of England then made a move that wasn't on the cards just a couple of weeks ago, raising interest rates by half a percent to a new base rate of 5%. Mortgage rates, though, are based largely on future expectations of changes in rates. And you can see how dramatically expectations shifted in just a month, with markets going from believing that rates would peak at 4.75% all the way up to a peak of 6%. So because of this, before the Bank of England even made this surprising move, lenders started pulling products and repricing them higher, in an echo of last October's unpleasantness. So what does this mean? Well, it means higher mortgage costs for anyone unfortunate enough to be coming to the end of a fixed rate deal. And because rates are now expected to be higher for longer, more households are likely to be pulled into this and forced to refinance at higher rates, with 2.4 million fixes due to end before the end of 2024. Make no mistake, this isn't good, but it is less dramatic than it first sounds. For a start, only 37% of properties in the UK have a mortgage on them at all, and even among buy-to-let properties, only around half have a mortgage. As a side note, this actually suggests to me that raising rates won't do much to help with inflation because there's a large asset-rich section of the population that's driving demand and are doing fine, and squeezing people who aren't in that position won't help. But it's the only tool the Bank of England have got, so they've kind of got to use it. Anyway, of those properties with mortgages, not all of them will be coming off fixed rates in the next couple of years. And of those that are coming off fixed rates in the next couple of years, not all of them will have large mortgages at high loan-to-values. The average outstanding mortgage debt in the UK is £127,000, which is a lot lower than I thought it would be. The obvious fear is that if people can't afford to pay their new higher mortgage rates, they'll lose their homes and there's political pressure to put in some kind of support fund to support homeowners. The government is resisting this pressure at the moment, which is sensible if you ask me. Normally, when a government intervenes to help people, it causes three other problems further down the line. And in any case, kind of the whole point of this is to make people feel poorer, to keep a lid on inflation. It's actually unlikely that there will be a large number of repossessions. That's because lenders are required to be far more forgiving than they used to be. They're required by their regulator to show forbearance and help out anyone who falls into arrears. And they just flat out don't want to repossess thousands of houses anyway because it's a pain for them. Jeremy Hunt is meeting lenders today and is likely to formalise some of this and to come out with some kind of statement intended to reassure homeowners. So that's what's happening, but what should you do if you need to take out a mortgage or remortgage at the moment? Well, I'll tell you, but this situation is moving fast, so do consider subscribing to the channel, and you can also sign up for our free weekly email where we round up all the latest news. The link for that is in the description. So what should you do? Well, the first thing is pretty obvious, but it's speak to a mortgage broker. And don't be spooked by figures about super high average rates. It doesn't mean that you'll necessarily be paying those rates. And it's more important than ever to work with a broker because it's so hard to figure out which deal is going to work out best for you. Lenders are trying to stay competitive despite everything that's going on, so they're increasingly making their margin from hefty product fees rather than by marking up their rates. And a broker can help you figure out the total cost for you over the life of the product. They'll also be the first to have information on new products and they get advance notice of products being withdrawn, which is happening so much right now. If you're worried about being able to make payments on your existing mortgage, speak to your lender early. Like I said, they're expected to help you out, so they'll likely offer you either an increased term to spread out the payments, a temporary shift to just paying the interest, or a payment holiday. But you do need to engage with them. If you just quietly start slipping behind with payments, they'll be less inclined to offer you these options. And while it's important to be alert and engaged, don't feel the pressure to rush into anything to get ahead of future changes. Like I said, mortgages are all around expectations, so as soon as you hear about something, it's already in the price. The decision that you'll wrestle with, as we have been for most of the last year now, is whether to take out a fixed or a variable rate. 
If you fix, then there's a risk that inflation will surprise to the downside. It could fall faster than expected. Interest rates could follow, and your fixed rate then doesn't look competitive anymore. But then again, the opposite could happen, and you'll look pretty smart. The markets have been consistently surprised over the last six months. Expectations of peak rates have gone from nearly 6% all the way down to 4.5%, then all the way back up to nearly 6% again. There's some important economic data coming out over the next couple of months, so we could easily see big further shifts. I would personally be tempted to go variable because I think there's more scope for surprise to the downside than upside from where we are now, but that is just an opinion, and at least by fixing, you'll know where you stand. The good news if you're buying a property right now is, hey, the bad news has already happened. When you could borrow at 2% or less, that clearly wasn't going to be the case forever. But now the correction has happened. So if you can make the numbers work at today's mortgage rates, you can be confident that they're not going to spike by anything like the same amount that they have done over the last year. And over the medium term, they could easily get a lot better. And I know it sounds crazy to say this now of all times, but despite the current chaos, it can be financially much better to have a mortgage than not to. And it can also be better to not try to pay it down. So watch this video next where I explain what I mean by that and give my personal top tips to benefit from the power of mortgages without risking getting into trouble.